Welcome to uh, lecture number 28 uh, of the course Computational Hydraulics. We are in module 2, Numerical Methods. And in this particular unit, uh, unit number 24, I will be talking about uh, algebraic equation, Jacobi method. Uh, Jacobi method essentially this is iterative technique uh, to solve any uh, algebraic system uh, with constant coefficients. Uh, we can utilize either direct approach, uh, we have seen that Gauss elimination, uh, the LU decomposition or tridiagonal matrix algorithm can be utilized to solve uh, our direct uh, direct our matrix to get our phi value. Uh, but in Jacobi's method or Jacobi method, we will talk about iterative technique to solve uh, the problem of starting from a guess value. Uh, learning objective, uh, at the end of this unit, students will be able to apply Jacobi method for iterative solution of uh, our algebraic system. Uh, matrix form, uh, full matrix, if we consider uh, full matrix, then uh, we have n by 1, uh, n by n, n cross 1, uh, n cross 1. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we are uh, defining uh, the algorithm for uh, general purpose matrix. Uh, that means uh, it is having uh, full uh, coefficients, and that means uh, all non zero coefficients or maximum number of non zero coefficients available within the system. Uh, phi is our uh, desired uh, variable. Now, in this case, uh, uh, what are the basic steps? Uh, in case of LU decomposition, we have uh, divided or decomposed the matrix into LU format. That means one lower and one upper triangular matrix. Uh, in that case, this was valid for this decomposition was valid for multiplication. But in this case, we are essentially considering L plus D plus U, where L is a strictly lower triangular matrix, this is strictly a diagonal matrix and uh, this is strictly upper triangular matrix. This has got no connection with our LU decomposition discussed in our uh, direct solution approach. Now, uh, in this case, uh, overall calculation can be presented like this. Uh, as we have decomposed our A, uh, our general structure was A phi equals to R. So, in place of A, uh, we can replace L plus D plus u that means a uh, lower diagonal upper. Now uh, for this one, for this one uh, we can write it like this. Uh, in this case we have divided it into uh, diagonal part and of diagonal part. So, if we say that this is our matrix, so we will divide it into one lower part, one diagonal part and uh, one again uh, triangular uh, upper triangular part. These are strictly that means this diagonal term is not included either uh, in our uh, upper or lower triangular. This is uh, only applicable for diagonal matrix. Now, uh, let us 
uh, decompose this uh, this phi uh, uh, like this. Uh, phi uh, can be multiplied with our d, and l plus u. This is multiplied with previous iteration value p. P stands for uh, the iteration uh, counter. So uh, if we start from uh, 0 which is a guest level this uh, equation or expression is valid from pre greater than equal to 1 that is why if p equals to 1 that means this is for first iteration this l plus u into phi p minus 1 that means this uh, value will be evaluated for uh, guest value that means p equals to 0 level. Now in this case uh, uh, 4 things are fixed that means d matrix is constant, l matrix is constant, u matrix uh, this is constant and r is also constant. The only varying thing is phi uh, every iteration phi is varying. We are not changing this l u that means uh, like our direct uh, uh, approach uh, we have uh, decomposed our matrix uh, into uh, different forms and we have changed those values. But in this case uh, we are not changing the values directly. Uh, we are keeping the structure intact and uh, we are just dividing it into lower diagonal and upper matrix in additive form. So uh, iterative form because we are not disturbing this diagonal lower upper value and R value. So I am uh, using the blue color. So that means we are not changing this value and this phi value at previous iteration P minus 1 this is available. If we start with 0 this should be given, this should be given. Now in iterative form uh, if we further write this, so uh, we transfer it on the right hand side. Now this is necessarily uh, inverting the diagonal matrix and multiplying it uh, with the uh, first one is our uh, previous iteration value and this is our uh, right hand side vector multiplied by this uh, diagonal term inverse. Now this iterative uh, process this is valid for p greater than equals to 1 uh, because we cannot apply this for uh, 0th level which is the guest level for any iteration. Now uh, iteration starts with a guest value phi not. Now in this process uh, if you want to uh, explain the whole thing blue values are undisturbed values. R values are also undisturbed values uh, unlike our direct uh, approach where uh, we are changing uh, different rows uh, to get uh, the desired solution. So in this case uh, the coefficient matrix A can be written as uh, L uh, which is strictly lower triangular matrix. Uh, notice uh, that we are not including the diagonal term here. This is strictly lower and the coefficients are exactly same. Next level is uh, we are dividing it with uh, diagonal term. So that means only diagonal term is there. Uh, we have 5 by 5 matrix. So 5 terms and next level uh, we have strictly upper triangular matrix. Uh, this also uh, is without 
uh, diagonal term because we are not including diagonal term in this process. So, iteration uh, this starts with uh, phi naught. Now, phi naught in this case this is a vector uh, column vector. Now, this is phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4 this is valid for 0th level. These values are given values. Now, iteration 1 we are calculating the iteration 1 value and this is we are just uh, transferring uh, off diagonal coefficients including the off diagonal variables. So, for 1 this is a 1 j and phi j and 0 that means whatever value is available at the previous time level we are utilizing that for calculation of uh, this off diagonal thing. So, if I uh, divided by a 1 1 I should get a uh, guess for uh, uh, from this iteration 1. Now, with uh, this case I am not calculating anything uh, for a particular iteration uh, I have calculated this. Now, for rho this is valid for rho 1. Now, for rho again I am calculating uh, without including the diagonal term. So, in this case a 1 1 uh, is the coefficient of the diagonal term in this case a 2 2 is the coefficient of diagonal term. So, without including j equals to 2 j uh, starting from 1 to 5 we are calculating this uh, using our old value or guess value. Rho 3 again a 3 3 and without including j equals to 3 that means without including the diagonal term we have again calculated this phi 3. Now, in this process uh, we can again calculate a 4 4 uh, by omitting this uh, fourth term which is the diagonal term. Then a uh, fifth one uh, by omitting that fifth one. Now, in iteration 2 uh, we will utilize uh, this updated value from 1. Okay. So, whatever value we have got from our uh, iteration 1 this stands for uh, iteration level 1 because iteration level uh, 0 was actually your guess level or initially provided value. So, iteration level 2 value calculated based on iteration level 1. Now, in this case row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5 these values can be calculated based on our uh, uh, this uh, straightforward process where we calculate the values on uh, previous time level value uh, pr previous iteration level value. We are not considering time level here we are simply considering the iteration levels. So, uh, if we talk about the general algorithm uh, again uh, we if, if we have n number of variables. So, phi 1 2 to n minus 1 n again uh, this one uh, we can calculate i th uh, rho uh, at pth iteration that depends on r i minus the summation of j equals to 1 to n by omitting i th term only and a i j uh, blue terms because we are not changing these coefficients or right hand term. So, that is why a i j phi j uh, p minus 1 phi j p minus 1 
and this is valid for all rows and this is applicable for p greater than equals to 1. So, we are dividing it by a i i. Now, in this process we can get the value for pth iteration level. Uh, by adding and subtracting this phi i p minus 1, uh, we can get that uh, let us say that uh, we are adding phi j uh, phi i uh, p minus 1. Uh, we have omitted here, let us add that value within the system. So, if we add this value, we will have this coefficient a i i phi i i um, p minus 1 all values are calculated at p minus 1 and divided by a i i. So, old value this is old value plus this is right hand side minus left hand side because we have con uh, calculated all values here. So, this is at p minus 1, p minus 1 level and a i i. So, we can divide it by the diagonal term. So, we can say that in this case uh, the Jacobi uh, iterative technique uh, can be uh, generalized like this that uh, if you have any row ith row uh, updated level value that should depend on the previous time level value plus residual. The residual means your right hand side minus the left hand side. This is your right hand side minus left hand side. This is residual for ith row divided by a i i. So, we can uh, get a simplified form of our Jacobi iteration or iterative technique. Now, uh, residual error is important because every iteration there will be a error associated with that. Now, what should be the stopping criteria? Stopping criteria uh, should be based on this residual error. Now, residual error uh, uh, we can utilize uh, to calculate this maximum absolute error. So, this is maximum uh, for all uh, i uh, in i to n we can calculate the maximum value of this uh, residual error uh, for different rows and we can get the maximum value that should be uh, below the desired uh, error. This is can be one criteria. Another one can be root mean square error that we have difference, we can take the square, sum it up divided by n and we can uh, take the square of uh, square root of that and this should be uh, below a desired uh, level. So, uh, we can use either this one or this one or we can use a combined one that uh, maximum value of root mean square error uh, this this can be maximum absolute error or this is RMSE value. Now, these values can be utilized for our uh, coding purpose uh, in Scilab. Uh, then comes this diagonal dominance. Uh, for convergence of iterative scheme, we need this diagonal dominance. That means, if uh, the modulus value of diagonal term is uh, a i i, uh, if it is equal uh, uh, to uh, off diagonal sum of absolute value of uh, off diagonal terms and uh, there exists 
1 L for which it is greater then uh, we uh, can call this as diagonal dominance. And uh, if you have weak diagonal dominance then uh, there can be multiple number of uh, rows uh, which can be uh, 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 which can satisfy uh, uh, this particular criterion. And uh, for strict diagonal dominance this strictly greater than condition should be satis satisfied for all rows. This is valid for all rows uh, and this is also uh, valid for all rows. That means for all i this condition uh, should be satisfied. So, we can call it as weak diagonal dominance or strict diagonal dominance. Now, in uh, iterative scheme uh, diagonal dominance is important. Diagonal dominance criteria should be satisfied otherwise you will not get convergence in case uh, of iterative schemes. Now, uh, let us consider example. Uh, we already know that uh, we have utilized this problem for our Gauss elimination, LU decomposition and uh, TDMA or tridiagonal matrix algorithm. Now, in this case uh, interesting part is that if we consider first row, uh, this first row is greater than mod 0 because all values are 0, uh, it has got no meaning. And so, we can say that this is greater than 0. Then for second row, uh, the diagonal term is this one A i i. So, A 2 2, A 2 2 term is mod 2. This is equal to mod 1 plus mod 1. So, this is equal. Next row, this is 3. This is 3 and uh, next condition is 1 plus minus 1. That means, 3 is greater than 2. That is why uh, strict uh, 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 this diagonal dominance is there. It is not strict because one case we have equality sign. Then this is uh, for fourth row. Again, uh, we have equality condition equality condition 1 plus mod 1 and fifth row again we have uh, diagonal dominance in this case. So, uh, we can see that for 3 rows, 3 rows 1, 2, 3 we have uh, diagonal dominance a strict dominance and for 2 rows we have equality sign uh, available. Now, in this case uh, if we uh, write our uh, conditions then uh, uh, we can write our code in scilab. So, let us uh, use it for this one, we can use the structure here, the CLC uh, again this clear screen, uh, this is clear uh, structure uh, or clear uh, memory. This count is for uh, number of uh, number counter for iteration, RMAC is root mean square error and phi, phi is the variable. Now, in Jacobi iteration we need A, A is the matrix R, then phi O, phi O uh, is the initial guess uh, that needs to be supplied and epsilon max, uh, this is maximum uh, uh, allowable uh, error which is 
the which needs to be specified for this case. Now, counter uh, we know already know this part from our Gauss elimination, LU decomposition and uh, other codes. So, we are starting with count equals to 0. So, counter is 0. Uh, initially, I am specifying RMSE equals to 1. Why? Because otherwise uh, this while loop uh, will not be executed here. So, if RMSE is greater than epsilon max, then only it will uh, uh, be executed. So, let us say that RMSE equals to 1, then automatically uh, the process will uh, start within this and at the beginning itself I am specifying RMSE equals to 0. So, I am initializing everything. Now, in this process uh, I am running it for all rows. So, I starting from 1 to n this residual let us say r i this is right hand side minus for all j all j. So, res c equals to res c i minus a i j into p h i o that is initial guess minus j uh, in uh, for jth element we are calculating this. Now, this is nothing but right hand side minus left hand side and we can divide it by the uh, diagonal term a i i. So, RMSE is uh, nothing but uh, the difference in old value and new value. So, old value and new value difference is resi divided by a i i. So, I am taking square of that, square of that. So, after this uh, now I am specifying this old value as uh, new value. So, in place of old value I am uh, changing this thing. So, and finally, uh, in this process I have calculated RMSE for all rows and finally, it is square root SQRT of RMSE divided by n. So, sum after sum and uh, taking sum of that uh, we are dividing it by n and then we are taking it as square root and count equals to count plus 1 that every iteration. So, we have started with counter 0 and this process we are counting. So, count equals to count plus 1. So, we have calculated RMSE, we have calculated count. Now, uh, let us use this as function for calculation of our case. So, function is count RMSE, count RMSE phi and a r phi o epsilon max these are the values. Now, in this process let us say that uh, we have our Uh, original uh, tridiagonal matrix available. So, 1 to 1, this is 1 3 1. Now, in this case, uh, if we calculate this, now in this case, uh, let us say this is our definition regarding A this is r vector, this is phi o. We are starting from 0, 0 value. We do not know what is the value. So, epsilon max uh, we have specified 1 e 10 to the power minus 6. The 1 e minus 6 means 1 into 10 to the power uh, minus 6. So, we are uh, calling this Jacobi function with count RMSE phi 
and we are providing a r phi o in, in terms of 0 0 and epsilon max as 1 e minus 6. So, if you run this uh, run this program uh, by selecting it and then executing it. So, you can see that uh, we are getting the exact uh, desired value 13579 uh, and uh, in this case uh, this RMSE is uh, uh, very less uh, it is close to 0 10 to the power uh, this is minus 16 and count 5 that means with 5 iteration only uh, we are getting this solution. So, with this uh, we have another uh, example this is again uh, 1, 2, 3, minus 5 like that. So, this is Uh, 1, 2, 3, minus 5, 0, 0, minus 3. So, in this case clearly uh, 1 the this is not uh, in, in, in this case uh, clearly it is visible this is our diagonal term this is not greater than the off diagonal term. So, uh, already we know that the solution is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But uh, let us see uh, uh, what value we are getting uh, out of our calculation process. Now, if we consider this uh, for calculation, again we run this with evaluate selection option. So, you will see that uh, absurd values are coming. Uh, these are not physical values and RMAC uh, is NAN uh, not a number and uh, a counter is also 878 although we are getting some value, but these are not meaningful. So, uh, it is clear that uh, to get a solution using iterative technique uh, we need to have diagonal dominance for our uh, solution uh, 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 or for our matrix. Otherwise, uh, this uh, uh, iterative technique is not applicable. Uh, we can see that there is clear violation for this one, this one because 3 which is less than minus 5. Uh, in this case also this is 2, uh, 4, 2, 6 which is greater, uh, greater than 3, 3 is our diagonal term. In this case also 10 uh, which is 7 uh, and 13 uh, 20, uh, 20 is greater than 10 again 2 9 all the cases we have uh, strict violation. So, uh, this uh, iterative method is not applicable for this kind of uh, matrices, thank you.